Hello and welcome to Core Values, the All Things Broken Arrow Public Schools podcast, part of the AirVision Podcast Network. I'm Greg Spencer alongside Chuck Perry, who's in a different seat today with me this morning. Good to see you, Chuck. It feels very strange, but <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Why don't you introduce these very special guests for us today that we have on the show? You bet. Uh, first of all, we have our Deputy Superintendent, Dr. Carla Dias, longtime Broken Arrow Tiger, has served as a, a teacher and principal uh, for many years in the district in a, many different roles, too. And then we also have our Executive Director of Secondary Ed, Ms. Sharon James, uh, who's close to our doctorate yep. stage. Yes. Oh, nice. Almost, Almost congratulations, so. then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, she's done a great job for us in uh, leading the way for a lot of new programs and managing our secondary sites. All right. Well, before we dive into our main topic today, why don't we get to know you guys just a little bit and tell us a little bit about your background, a little bit beyond what Chuck just did. But Carla, we'll start with you. Tell us about, you know, where are you from, where you went to college and, and okay. all that kind of stuff. All Talk right. a little bit about your family. Okay. Good morning. Uh, I'm originally from Denver, Colorado, went nice. to UNC, which is a university in Northern Colorado mm -hmm. in Greeley. I uh, have a master's from uh, CU in Boulder. You and excited then, about the Deion Sanders hire? Oh, heck yes. That's <laughs> awesome. Yes, yes. Uh, my husband and my three daughters and I relocated to Broken Arrow uh, almost 29 years ago. Oh, wow. We've lived in Broken Arrow the entire time. And I have three adult daughters. They're all BA grads. One's a teacher in Broken Arrow. Yep. And last year's teacher last of the year just, just the had year. to give up yeah. her vehicle, yeah. unfortunately. I'm sad about that. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like she may be trying to talk her husband into getting. Yeah. getting oh, yeah. They've, Matthews Ford has a new customer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And my other daughter's a physical therapist and has three kids and lives in Broken Arrow. And my youngest is a nurse and she lives in North Carolina. So nice. Very nice. Love BA. Sharon, what about you? Well, I was raised in Oklahoma. Nice Denver area, but <laughs> um, I grew up in a very small community, so I always laugh, and my friends give me a hard time because I work in the largest high school in the state of Oklahoma yeah. and graduate with 28 people, so yeah. definitely something different. But I was raised in Oklahoma outside of um, the Sand Springs area, and my son is 25. Um, he went to Oklahoma State, um, and he's now working in accounting and doing really well. I graduated from Oklahoma State, and I'm currently enrolled at um, Oral Roberts University working on my doctorate. Very cool. Very cool. So we are here today to talk a little bit about the eighth grade academy. It was a thing that we we discussed last spring when we did the live streams. We sent out surveys. We did the forum. It's been a, a topic uh, of the, that we've been kind of, you know, dealing with for, for a little bit. We had another announcement uh, back in, in the fall. And today we're going to give a little bit of an update to, to everybody watching at home or listening. Um, you know, it's a concept that's changed a little bit, little bit since we originally discussed it. Uh, but before we discuss the, the current plan, why don't you walk us through kind of the different iterations that we've had over the course of last year or so? Okay, absolutely. I can, I'll start and feel free to interject. Um, we did a lot of research on just eighth graders and best practices with eighth graders and opportunities for eighth grade students. And we talked about um, an eighth grade academy just for our eighth graders preparing for that next transition for high school. Did a lot of research, had some teachers' voices, principals. Um, Ms. James has led a committee. And we went to the community in the fall and just talked about having all of our eighth graders under one roof in the district. Um, and we were really excited about that opportunity. And that the, the original announcement was at Sequoia. Right. And yeah. so where talk a little bit about where we're at on that decision right now. Well, currently, as we've looked at all the challenges that have arisen just with the increase in cost, um, we're really looking at placing it in Sequoia behind the site that's there now um, and doing a pilot program for them where just those eighth graders at Sequoia are able to attend. And we can do a pilot. We can work through all the awesome things we thought we could try as a holistic, give it a chance, see if it's going to work and see if it's a good fit for our kiddos in our, our district. And what is it, what does that mean? Diff, using the term pilot, what does that mean differently from the announcement in the fall? Well, I think, um, the announcement in the fall was, you know, taking every eighth grader in the district yeah. and this is a, a much smaller basis. We wanted to give the eighth graders, um, some opportunities career path wise to start exploring and uh, again, preparing them for their high school years. And we're finding it as our district grows across five different uh, middle schools, it became more of a challenge 
over the last couple of years and having them all in one place would allow us to do a better job. There's so many opportunities now in Broken Arrow within Vanguard, early college high, uh, concurrent enrollment, enrollment um, options, virtual, um, yeah, obviously our, our tech um, is, is an option. And I want to back up just a little bit and talk about even the master plan that we had um, several years ago that we started working on of putting an eighth grade academy there on the freshman academy campus was yeah. uh, the main goal. We felt like um, there could be a lot of um, smoother transitions between eighth and ninth grade the way they're not at the freshman academy just for uh, on that site for one year. Um, there was some looping and being able to take some upper level courses for our eighth graders. And we thought that was going to be a, um, you know, an optimal plan for our district. And frankly, we just ran, ran into construction costs um, um, during the pandemic, post pandemic supply chain, you know, issues where, um, we were actually under $300 a square foot when we started planning this uh, several years ago, and now we're up to $370 a square foot. And when you're building a site with that much roof, um, that adds up in a hurry. So, well, I think you even talked about on one of our last podcasts about just the changes in, in inflation in the last year as well since uh, the original mm -hmm. announcement. It's It's been mind-blowing what we've had to – uh, contend with, and this is not unique to Broken Arrow. Other school districts yeah. across the state are facing the same things, passing bond issues, and then immediately having to uh, <laughs> almost corrective measures on their bond issue just because the money that was allocated towards those projects is not there. So going in this direction where the eighth grade model is, is more of a pilot program, does that allow us to potentially revisit the idea of a full-fledged eighth grade academy, be it at that same location or at the the Baffa site eventually? I, I really do believe so down the road that will give the district what we're doing at Sequoia uh, does not, you know, fence in or, or handcuff the district in years to come from doing what was part of that master plan. Um, it, you know, that's something for a future school board and uh, maybe a superintendent to figure out. I don't want to say that's what we're going to do set in stone, but um, I, what we're doing now does not hurt the district and does not force us uh, to stay in that same model that we're in now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of you guys talk to me a little bit about talk, talk, the current concept of kind of where we're at and where we're at in terms of who's involved in the decision making. There's a basically a second committee, right, that's just recently been yes. put together, and we just had a meeting a few weeks ago. Uh, talk to us a little bit about where we're at on that. Absolutely. We have started a committee. Uh, we've asked teachers. That's really our huge number. Mm -hmm. uh, we needed their input, their expertise. So we brought in teachers. We have administrators and some counselors on that, along with myself and Dr. Dias. We're on that committee. And you as well, yeah. giving yeah. us your insight. <laughs> Um, and so what we're really doing is looking at what do we have going on in our district as a whole mm -hmm. that we can expand on. Things that are really good, things that are happening that we feel like we can build upon that momentum. And also, kind of like Mr. Perry mentioned, moving more opportunities down to the eighth grade. We need more kids seeing what they can do, what that their post-secondary goals are, and give them a little taste of that so yeah. they can make that decision. So the committee right now is currently analyzing everything. What's our strengths? What's our weaknesses? Where's some opportunities? But also what's some threats? What I like about this, um, the idea of the pilot, like it reflects what our parents gave us, you know, and fed to us back in our forums. They were talking about the concern of will it work? What yeah. if it doesn't work? So this allows us to take all the information, all the research we found, how exciting some of the opportunities will be, and see if it doesn't work, we're not tied to that. But when you talked about the consistency of us helping our students, especially eighth graders, know what opportunities they have in Broken Arrow from 9 through 12, it takes a lot to get them um, informed and their parents and their families. So I think doing this pilot will allow us to do a lot of great things to see if it's going to work holistically. Yeah. And if it does, then we'll apply it across the board or in a, you know, in a standalone if that's what the district chose to do. You know. We've also included our freshman academy couple teachers administration on that committee yeah. for their input because they they can help us with their experience. Yeah. Carla, why don't you talk to me a little bit about so, you know this being at Sequoia, what you know why Sequoia is a good location for it and then 
how, you know, when this does open, I believe in the 25, 26 school years, is that, that correct? Uh, how will that situation look different as far as, w- at least with where we're at right now? Okay. Um, we're really excited about the location. We, we did look at all the different op- opportunities we have in the district, different land, um, like uh, Mr. Perry mentioned, Freshman Academy. Um, some of the drawbacks of those were it was too hard to expand. They didn't have the streets. Um, their current facilities didn't have the capacity to hold our kids. Yeah, uh, We love the location of Sequoia. It's right in the middle of town. Um, it's very close to the Freshman Academy. So when we look at those opportunities for kids, we can transport them really easily mm. to Freshman Academy or teachers can come to Sequoia. One thing, it'll be a standalone site behind Sequoia. Yeah. Um, and kind of p- right there to the right and then to the back. Correct. Of the right. yeah. Yes. Um, and it will house about 500 students. Okay. So we will be changing some boundaries um, for all the kids. And to clarify, that's 500 eighth, eighth grade graders, students correct. in yeah. that building, in addition to the sixth and seventh yes. grade students in the existing Sequoia yes. building. And that's what I think we want people to know, like it's going to help all of, all of our middle mm-hmm. schools because we'll be pulling some students from different middle schools to the Sequoia campus. Yeah. And so currently, correct me if I'm wrong, but Sequoia has about 250 eighth graders, right? I believe the exact number was 252. Correct. So if we're going to have 500 eighth graders at this future Sequoia site, how does that work? So we will be looking at the district, um, all those middle schools, probably doing some um, boundary changes, yeah. which are, we will definitely- Fun topic, right? Yeah, I was right. Gonna say, <laughs> we will include our community in those conversations. Yeah, yeah. As always, yeah. Um, and we'll be just shifting some students. So some students will shift maybe away from Sequoia, but then mm-hmm. we will shift students to the sixth and seventh grade uh, students at Sequoia. There'll be more sixth and seventh graders and then the 500 eighth graders. So it'll open up some classroom spaces at the other middle schools who are feeling that crowding. Yeah. And then we talked about how you guys want to leave probably around 50 spots open for people that are outside that future yeah. district for some of the potential unique offerings that, that are going to be here that the right. committee is helping to decide on, right? Yeah. If you want to because expand you know, on that a little bit. With our academy approach that we have through 9 through 12, it's a nice fit for the middle school level. So if they want to go there, if they're excited about a program that we start up at the, the pilot eighth grade academy, those students can join us, mm-hmm. you know, if they choose, if they're excited about that. And, that I, path. and I think it's <laughs> exciting because over the past several years, we've been looking at different things, whether it be in career tech, STEM, robotics, technology, uh, technology uh, what we could do for our eighth graders and really give them a unique opportunity that's different than the, the traditional middle school setting we have now. And when you go to do that and to replicate that across five middle schools to keep it equitable between those five middle schools, it, it's just not uh, cost efficient. We just can't afford to do something like that. So I think that's where this pilot program is going to uh, be a good chance to see what we can do. So when we take that next step to do a large program, um, all students will have that opportunity to, to be a part of it. Well, and we even talked about, you know, off camera before we started, you know, some of the same equipment that we have right here, they actually have at Sequoia already, thanks to a uh, career tech, career tech grant that a former teacher got there. So we, I mean, we'd love to eventually be able to have kind of a pilot pro, you know, a pilot within a pilot, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, program that really, and maybe even that, that could be something that the, we bust some of the ninth graders over as well, because we do have the makings of a potentially a good studio situation there, uh, you know, to kind of help start a, a better feeder program. Um, so the building itself, we talked about 30 classrooms for 500 students. Um, so talk about some of the other features that, that will be there there, you know, with, with Sequoia already having a, a brand new cafeteria and things like that, you're not going to have to build a new cafeteria. So, uh, just discuss some of those things. Also, one thing we've learned from Vanguard when we built Vanguard, um, it has a standalone cafeteria as well. So our we don't want to add to that. We have the cafeteria, we have a kitchen. So what we're hoping to do is just have an eating area that's more of a commons area yeah. for students to get their hot, you know, hot plate of food. They can sit there, be a little more comfortable for that group. Um, 
In addition, um, I think we're looking at a couple of rooms that we can be, they're going to be hu- a lot bigger than Flex the spaces. Class. Yeah, yeah, that we can say, what does that look like? And that depends on the committee. Yeah. You know, what they feel like, hey, let's put this there and let us grow and have more opportunity and we can use those flex spaces. There's room for counselor, of course, and additional admin, which mm-hmm. we're going to need with that additional student. And we've talked account. about a Chrome desk. Yeah. That's something yeah, our eighth grade students don't have, mm-hmm. you know, they don't get to do right now. So yeah. Another opportunity. Yeah. I, I did the, I actually did the video for Sarah Galbraith oh, from, okay. from the oh, freshman oh, yeah. Academy. And so it's such a, you know, they do the same thing over here, but that's such a unique opportunity for those kids that are mm-hmm. interested in their, in their small classes, but they get really great hands-on opportunities. Yes. So the earlier, yeah, and, and there's plenty of eighth graders out there that are, oh. they're capable of that yes. stuff. So, um, Talk a little bit about what are some of the pros and cons of a separate facility for eighth graders as we kind of look at the broad scope of the district, you know, what, what are, why is this the best option for us? Well, I think some of the things we've already spoken about yeah. that we can be more intentional, intentional about educating our families and our students about the opportunities they have and how, what their pathway is. What do you want to do when you graduate and how we can push down a little bit more of experiences that we're not able to provide right now or inconsistently provide. We can bring them together. Also, um, a sense of community. Some of the the issues of having ninth grade or concerns that we've had in the past is that these kiddos come, they've not had a sense of community. They don't know each other. So we felt like the eighth grade Academy will help with that, help bring them together, provide them more leadership opportunities. So those were a lot of the positives. In addition to advanced math, high school credit, we could give them a lot more opportunity to earn high school credit early on. Because as we have Vanguard, we have Tech, Technology Center, we have concurrent enrollment. We need kiddos. These kids want to take advantage of that. So getting a head start on high school credits is is a benefit to them. And Chuck, you could probably speak on this or either one of you, but I think it's also a lot of advantages for our academics and our arts and, you know, in that world. Absolutely. And again, trying to... Excuse me, I meant uh, athletics and arts. I I just said academics. Trying to replicate those, again, uh, across five different middle schools and recruit effectively uh, across five different middle schools has um, always been a challenge. And again, as our, you know, we hit 20,000 students this year, and as we've grown, that challenge becomes greater each year. And I want to be honest, too, and transparent to our parents that, you know, we've done a lot of research and looked across the country. There is not a perfect model for any school out there. Um, of how they're arranged. It's got to fit within the community. It's got to be the right fit for um, the socioeconomic level of the students and uh, where they're at, um, you know, how strong the elementary schools are that are preparing these kids for the middle school. And, you know, having grown up in Broken Arrow and I went through Sequoia Middle School and had a great experience, I felt it prepared me very well for my high school Years And at that time, we only had um, two middle schools, Central and Sequoia. And my eighth grade year, they opened Haskell. Um, it, you know, it was a different world back then. We've, we still have to be evolving as a school district or, and how we do school to prepare kids for um, a career down the line. And this eighth grade model, I think, is best. But there are a lot of great advantages to our uh, middle schools now. Um, uh, I've always, you know, loved um, walking through our middle schools. They just have such uh, a positive vibe and feel to them. And it's a tough age group. I taught there for six years, and kids are um, still moldable is what I like about it at that age. They'll still listen, and um, there's a lot of great things that you can pour into their lives and uh, kind of prepare them for, uh, again, that transcripted high school years. So it, it's not – What we're doing, I wouldn't say is the perfect plan, but there's no perfect plan out there. And we just want to do what's best for our kids and always be a progressive district that is doing um, some new things. And we don't want to get uh, stagnant or in a rut and not uh, be competitive. So our kids, when they graduate, they can't go out and uh, earn a quality living. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Did did you have something that you wanted to add? The only thing I was going to mention was when we talked to some of the teachers um, in the fall about an eighth grade academy, they did comment on how sixth and seventh graders were really 
different than eighth graders, that maturity level. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so we are yeah. excited to see if, if this helps and maybe gives, helps our eighth graders stand out and get some leadership. We talked a lot about leadership courses and also just see what the sixth and seventh graders who are in the Sequoia part of the building, how it affects their behavior and just their learning opportunities and leadership opportunities. Yeah, I mean, I, I can remember when I was that age, I, I was at, you know, so I lived in Broken Arrow through second grade and then moved to Miami, Oklahoma. Uh, and when we, I was actually the last class of sixth graders that went to elementary school because we switched from a junior high model to middle school. And I, I was actually kind of grateful for that because, you know, I came over as a seventh grader. And even to me, those eighth graders seemed older than me, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess technically they were. Uh, but, you know, so you can imagine what a, Six, you know, kids yeah. age differently. Mm-hmm. So, so sixth or eighth grade can, can feel like a big difference. Yeah. So it's, yeah. there, there's like Chuck said, there's no correct, perfect model in that kind of middle school age. Like everybody's pretty uniformly set on how elementary school works, but you look around here and there's all sorts of different models, whether yeah. it's, you know, sixth graders by themselves or six, seven, eight, you know, there's everybody kind of takes a different, different look at how you do middle school for sure these days. Um, so talk to me, talk to me a little bit about the timeline, kind of where we're at right now. What can parents and students and staff, uh, uh, you know, plan to hear next? Well, um, <laughs> we're going to finish up the committee that we have right yeah. now, as far as the programming with inside that building. Again, we want to do something unique and different than we've uh, done before in at least one area, and that will probably go, grow over the years. Um, I would expect, uh, you know, a more formal announcement of our plan soon. Um, there's no doubt had a lot of uh, concerned parents come to me after we made the decision about eighth grade academy that, um, you know, weren't in favor of it. So I think some people will be happy that we're not moving to that. Uh, in a full, in full, full redistricting load, capacity. Yeah, yeah, within the next couple of years. Um, so you know, you're, you're always going to have different opinions on, uh, what's best for their child, uh, that will, will make that formal announcement. And, um, you know, you'll start seeing the, um, we're starting to get the architecture, um, yeah, we finally got some initial, yes. in, in fact, if you, if you want, I can display those right here. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh that, that's something that'll be the, you know, you'll start ground will start breaking and it's going to be a, a little bit of inconvenience next year at Sukhoya with that. Uh, so the, we do think the timeline that the ground would break next year. Sometime. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the timeline has not changed. We still are uh, preparing to open for the 25, 26 school year. So uh, we do the good thing is we do have time to uh, make some tweaks and um, make it the best we can be for opening day. Yeah, and like you guys said, the committee is going to play a big factor in, in what's happening in that building. But just to, to summarize again, fall 25, 26, 500 students, eighth grade only in the new building, 30 classrooms, existing sixth and seventh graders still still at Sequoia, dining area, Chrome, Chromebook desk, counselors, principal's office, and then potentially access uh, BAFA students to some of the opportunities yeah. at Sequoia or the eighth grade academy, I should say. Did yeah, I miss anything yeah. there? No. 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 Um, all right. Well, that, that pretty much wraps up that portion. I've got a couple other things. Is there any other big items that you guys want to talk about? We just had our star gala. This this uh, I've lost track of time, but I think it was two or three days ago. But uh, another long great week. evening. Long week. Yeah. <laughs> it has been a long week. Yeah. Stuff, you know. yeah. Uh, and congratulations. We had a, another Rosewood Elementary yeah. Teacher of the Year, Amanda yeah. Bowser. She's just a fabulous teacher. And actually, a repeat teacher of the year. For, that's probably that's probably got to be a first first yeah. time, right? Yeah. She was runner up at state level too. Yeah, about year eight year. or nine years yeah. ago. And Funny. and funny story, she actually told me, you know, she's she's probably okay with me telling this. If not, I'll I'll edit it out. But <laughs> uh, she, when I did her interview for the video, she, I said, so you're back here again, huh? And she said that when she first, because she was at, at Oakcrest, right? And so Rosewood is a new school for her. And I said. Uh, or she said when she when when she first went to Rosewood, the first two years, she told uh, her principal, Nate Hutchings, make sure that I'm out of the running for this. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to go through the process again. And she but she knew that she was working with a whole new staff of people that, that wouldn't necessarily know. And there's a lot of young young teachers over there at Rosewood. And, you know, so 
she actually forgot to tell him that this year. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so that that's kind of what happened there. It's kind of a funny story during our interview that we, we left on the cutting room floor there. But, what, yeah, she's just a, an awesome teacher for sure. She is. And one thing I, I really loved what she said that night and her speech was, this room gives me hope. And yes. uh, credit to your AeroVision team, Greg, and the videos that they produce on each of the teachers because uh, – it does give you hope about uh, education and um, the great teachers that we have across the district. You know, we can't look to legislators, uh, um, you know, new law to come in to fix everything in education. We've got a lot of time just look inward and pull together. And with the great people we have across the district, I think that's what makes Broken Arrow such a great place to be. And you could, uh, like she said, you could feel it in the room. And um, I have such a positive outlook for uh, Broken Arrow Public Schools after nights like that. Yeah, for okay. sure. Can I give one quick shout out? Last yep. night I went to the uh, Broken Arrow uh, District Art Show at NSUBA. Yep. I had a two-week run out there. And uh, the award show was last night. And we have so much young talent oh, across the district. Just which shows you how many great art teachers we have, yeah, for sure, too. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, just made me happy to see all those young faces and being so proud and the ownership that they have uh, with their work that they produced. All right, so before we let you guys go, I always ask a few just kind of fun questions for, for people. Uh, rapid fire, we'll just kind of go back and forth. Start with you, Carla. Best vacation you've ever been on? Oh, uh, Germany, December, Germany. September. Nice. It's awesome. Pretty Berlin. Yeah. I've been to London. Well, yeah, I've, I've always yeah. wanted to go there. Oh, All right. Fun. You've got, you've got one artist, one band or artist you can see in concert that you've never seen before. Who would it be? I'm going to show my age. Def Leppard. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't seen them before? No. I've had tickets with them. Aren't they coming times. to like yeah. Skelly Stadium or something? Yeah, or not Ske so. Chapman Stadium? I've had tickets three times and any stuff came up. I had graduation one yeah. night. I, just different things. I haven't been able to go see them yet. Uh, pink. I'm actually going. I've seen oh, Pink once before, okay. but we're going in September. Yeah. It's oh, going to Pink awesome. and Brandy Carlisle in Dallas. Energy. Yeah. I just love her. Yeah. Energy. She's amazing. Um, current favorite binge worthy tv show that you're watching or that you've you know recently watched we were talking about office early yeah that's definitely oh i have been on a seinfeld kick i know it's old but yeah. it's on netflix now yeah. and it's just lighthearted and fun and love it i've started watching abbott elementary it's yeah. got me hooked got great show set up with the office we talked about that earlier i'm trying to think i I binge watch so many. There's I no time to them. watch TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I, I've 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 got about two shows that I'm currently watching. One is Succession on HBO. Oh, if you, if you don't, great. it's it's incredible, and they just had a, an amazing episode this last week. And yeah. then Abbott Elementary is probably the other one that I'm <laughs> consistently finding time time to watch right now. Chuck, you got anything new that you're kind of uh, watching? Uh, nothing new. No. Nothing lately. I can't even add in there. <laughs> you guys got any plans for the summer? We're getting close. It's hard to believe, but it's almost May, and we're getting towards the end of the year. What, what's what's coming up for you guys this summer? Uh, besides work, yeah. I have four grandkids, just hanging out with them a yeah. lot, and yeah. going to Colorado for a visit. Um, actually, have tickets for Jamaica. Oh, oh nice. I've never been there, so that's one of my hey. beaches I want to go see, so I am going there. Yeah. How about you? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a couple plans. We're going to go down to Broken Bow for, for the, for a, a week. we got a nice cabin oh, we've rented there and, fun. uh, and then we're going to go, uh, you know, I'm a big Dodgers fan. We're not, we took a trip to California last year, but this year the Dodgers happen to both be playing in, cause they, uh, MLB has a new kind of, everybody has like, everybody plays everybody right. now, you know, they've, they've done, they've been done interleague for a while, but now it's a balanced schedule. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're actually playing in Kansas City and in Texas oh, this wow, year, which thanks. they don't do very often. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a couple trips out of that as well. What about you, Chuck? Uh, spending time with my granddaughter, Opal. We've got a concert. You going to the Avett Brothers? Brothers? Yeah, I'll, I'll be there for that one. <laughs> I introduced Chuck to the Avett Brothers about, yeah. what, six years ago or so? Yeah, and One of my favorite bands. Yeah. Oh. So, And you did get to go to Red Rocks, right? Yes, well, yeah. Did. Have you guys ever been, have you been to oh, Red yeah, Rocks? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, my daughter's going there in a couple of weeks. For yeah. Some if, if you haven't been, maybe you can see Def Leppard there one day. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I, we really appreciate you guys joining us here today and updating everybody on the current eighth grade academy model and what's to come. Uh, we'll have a new episode of Core Values here pretty soon, as well as our other podcasts. So we want to thank everybody for listening and we'll see you next time.